Let the hearts that seek the Lord rejoice. Turn to the Lord and his strength. Constantly seek his face. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. My friends, prepare our hearts to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, Ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. We invoke your mercy in humble prayer, O Lord, that you may cause us, your servants, corrected by penance and schooled by good works, to persevere sincerely in your commands and come safely to the Paschal festivities. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once to your people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, for they have become depraved. They have soon turned aside from the way I pointed out to them, making for themselves a molten calf and worshipping it, sacrificing to it and crying out, This is your God, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I see how stiff-necked this people is. Let me alone, then, that my wrath may blaze up against them to consume them. Then I will make of you a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God, saying, Why, O Lord, should your wrath blaze up against your own people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with such great power and with so strong a hand? Why should the Egyptians say, with evil intent he brought them out, that he might kill them on the mountains and exterminate them from the face of the earth? Let your blazing wrath die down. Relent in punishing your people. Remember your servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, and how you swore to them by your own self, saying, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and all this land that I promised, I will give your descendants as their perpetual heritage. So the Lord relented in punishment. He had inflicted, threatened to inflict on his people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A responsorial psalm. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Our fathers made a calf in Horeb and adored a molten image. They exchanged their glory for the image of a grass-eating bullock. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. They forgot the God who had saved them, who had done great deeds in Egypt, wondrous deeds in the land of Ham, terrible things at the Red Sea. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Then he spoke of exterminating them, but Moses, his chosen one, withstood him in the breach to turn back his destructive wrath. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in him might have eternal life. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Jews, 
If I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is not true. But there is another who testifies on my behalf, and I know that the testimony he gives on my behalf is true. You sent emissaries to John, and he testified to the truth. I do not accept human testimony, but I say this so that you may be saved. He was a burning and shining lamp, and for a while you were content to rejoice in his light. But I have testimony greater than John's. The works that the Father gave me to accomplish, these works that I perform testify on my behalf that the Father has sent me. Moreover, the Father who sent me has testified on my behalf, but you have never heard his voice nor seen his form, and you do not have his word remaining in you because you do not believe in the one whom he has sent. You search the scriptures because you think you have eternal life through them, Even they testify on my behalf. But you do not want to come to me to have life. I do not accept human praise, moreover. I know that you do not have the love of God in you. I came in the name of my Father, but you do not accept me. Yet if another comes in his own name, you will accept him. How can you believe when you accept praise from one another and do not seek the praise that comes from the only God. Do not think that I will accuse you before my Father. The one who will accuse you is Moses, in whom you have placed your hope. For if you had believed Moses, you would have believed me, because he wrote about me. But if you do not believe his writings, how will you believe my words? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. If you had believed Moses, you would have believed me because he wrote about me. There's a very old principle in biblical theology. The New Testament is hidden in the Old, and the Old Testament is revealed in the New. What this means is that the Old Testament points to Jesus Christ. And in Jesus Christ, we see revealed the full truth of what the Old Testament was pointing to. Jesus says, Moses wrote about me. But Moses didn't write any of the Gospels. That was Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But Moses did write the Pentateuch, those first five books of the Bibles, Genesis, Exodus, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. He wrote those books pointing to Jesus. We see in Exodus this familiar story of God getting angry with the people of Israel. Isn't that what he does often? (laughs) They often screw up as we often uh, screw up, but they've made a molten calf. They've worshipped a molten calf, a golden calf, and God is angry, and he says, look, I'm going to destroy these people, and Moses, I'll give you a great nation. You're faithful, but these people, they are not. And we see Moses interceding on behalf of the people, interceding, saying, Lord, have mercy. Kyrie eleison. Lord, have mercy. Jesus Christ at this moment is seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us as we hear sometimes in the penitential rite. Jesus Christ intercedes for us as Moses interceded for us. And I'll take it a step further. We as Christians are called to intercede as well. I was talking to someone the other day who was saying, you know, in this time when we are stuck at home, can't come to Mass, can't go to work, some of us, with the county issuing a safer at home initiative or whatever it's called, this person said, I'm I'm lonely. I think there's an invitation here to to transition from loneliness to solitude. Loneliness says, I'm cut off, I'm alone. Solitude says that I am like a monk in his cell, a nun in her convent. Solitude says, I'm alone, I don't have anyone else around me but I'm not really alone. Jesus Christ is with me. 
God the Father is with me. The Holy Spirit is with me. And because of that, I can pray. And so my friends, let us transition from loneliness to solitude. Let us intercede for our world, for our family, our friends, our parish, especially those who are sick in this time, those who are caring for the sick. Let us intercede as Moses did. Let us intercede as Jesus does. Let us follow their example and turn to our Lord, asking for his mercy, his healing, his peace, his comfort, his love to be known in this hurting world. We should pour forth prayers at all times, dear brothers and sisters, but above all in these days of Lent, we ought to watch more intently with Christ and direct our petitions more fervently to God. For the whole Christian people, that in this sacred time they may be more abundantly nourished by every word that comes from the mouth of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the whole world, that in lasting tranquility and peace, our days may truly become the acceptable time of grace and salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For sinners, that in this time of reconciliation, we all may return to Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For ourselves, that God may at last stir up in our hearts a version for our sins. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those affected by the coronavirus, all those who are sick, those who have lost family members, all those who are caring for the sick, may the Lord protect them and bring a swift end to this crisis. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the soul of Ginny Collins, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that your people may turn to you with all their heart, so that whatever they dare to ask in fitting prayer, they may receive by your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, that we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that what we offer in sacrifice may cleanse us in our frailty from every evil, and always grant us your protection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts that, freed from disordered affections, they, most, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may come, become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Gregory, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. In this mingling of body of the Lord Jesus Christ, eternal life to us to receive it. On you stay, quitolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, quitolis peccata mundi, Miserere nobis. 
Agnus Dei Equitulis Peccata Mundi, Dona Nobis Pacem. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, through your death give life to the world, free me of this, your most holy body and blood from all my sins from every evil. Keep me always faithful to your commandments, that we may be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Body of Christ, we say for eternal life. We say for eternal life. My friends, let us pray together the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let's pass the food of the Lord. May we possess in purity of heart, that you have given to us in time and be our healing for eternity. Let us pray. May this sacrament we have received purify us, we pray, O Lord, and grant your servants freedom of, from all blame, that those bound by a guilty conscience may glory in the fullness of heavenly remedy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. O God, protector of all who hope in you, Bless your people, keep them safe, defend them, prepare them, that free from sin and safe from the enemy, they may persevere always in your love. Through Christ our Lord, amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Have a great day, everybody.